Hello, hello, my name is Mushen, and this is Houdini Fluids tutorial. We'll discuss flip fluids and vellum grains, but we'll focus on flip fluids for a good reason. I'll tell you more why later. So, a quick thing before we begin. This tutorial is sponsored by an amazing community of artists in Nazi for Work Blender. You'll be able to find a link to them in description of this video and basically you'll probably watch us from this channel so hello this tutorial will be in somewhat two chapters so the first chapter will be mainly safe work so that you could see us on youtube and stuff and the second part will be more detailed on our not safe for work systems and parts so let's begin okay let's start with creating a demo scene in blender we'll delete everything as per usual and i'll add two icospheres here i'll add plane like this and we'll mirror the sphere a long way like this so that we have two spheres and origins are set to geometry like this so one sphere will be dedicated to only flip fluid other will be set to vellum grain. So pretty easy example, right? Just trim a fluid down and that's it. Now let's talk about our conventions, how we move materials and basically data from Houdini to Blender and vice versa. So first of all, naming. It really matters a lot. So let's name it. Leap. Flip source geometry, vellum source geometry, and our ground plane. Ground plane geometry. We'll need to name it for because when we export in Alembic, it will unify all objects in one, and then we separate them again we need to distinguish what object do we need from it. And the name is one way to do it. One way that I use at least. So let's grab the all objects. File, export, Alembic, and choose wherever you wish to. I'll create a new folder in desktop. It will be our project folder. This is chapter one. Save for work set up right we'll need subdirectories because there will be a lot of data involved you'll see soon so this is our blender import since our main programming for this tutorial is houdini we'll treat all folders from houdini's perspective so this is import from blender that's why you're free to name it whatever you wish to really this just your conventions so one thing more this is for a good measure if we mess up it would be better if you have digits in the end of your file see i name it scene 001 why so because if you'll need to do iterations it is better to have digits on end so that you could increase the number basically instead of new new real new and this suffixes i went through this a lot so yeah it is better to keep iterations like this export lambic export is finished great let's jump into houdini first of all let's save our project to desktop chapter one safe work 
we will not need to create subdirectories for a project file, although we'll need for few other type of files. So this is our just for good measure, right? Safe work setup. Right? If we jump into our desktop right now, you can see that this file is create safe work setup that hip Houdini project file and Blender import we've seen 001. Good job. So if you do not know the basics of Houdini, I advise you to watch through a great series on YouTube by Nine Between. Houdini isn't scary. There is really a lot of data here you can check, and philosophy and basics are really there. Although I get it, it can be intimidating. So now is this dealt with? we can start off with the tutorial. So we save to the project file and now we can start creating. This is our scene view shelf with our basic setups so that almost anything that you can make is located somewhere here, at least in the most basic form of it. So our volume setups, our particle fluids, flip fluids are here also. And we'll discuss how to set it up manually and what is the difference, what is done differently. So let's begin. First of all, we gotta bring our geometry from Blender, right? Let's click tab and add our geometry node. This will be our like folder for stuff so that we'll see. I'll name it import and this will be my utility node where I import a bunch of files, separated them so that I could reference them in the future. For example, let's create our Alembic node so that we could import Alembic file into a scene. Let's grab our dot dollar sign hip and import and scenes user one. You can see that it is not really what we exported, right? So the fix for it is really, really simple. We can load it instead of Alembic delayed load primitives. Use either load Houdini geometry and we can switch back so that the bug is disappeared. All right, we are now live and it works. You can see though that it is gray all over. So if we add cube here, you see that box is also gray. But for imported objects, we really should see UVs on them. So let's jump back here. We'll need to convert this to workable geometry with points, vertices, and so on exposed. So note for it is really called convert. So read into it, we'll set to your flag to it. And you can see that, all right, we see stretched UVs of our cube because we have scaled it in Blender before. UVs on icospheres are a preset, so not bad. Now let's separate all objects into different nodes so that we could reference each and any of them. So I'll do this really manually because this is small setup and usually I would work with small setups. This is optimal for my system. So let's grab ourselves blast node. It is named really great. It blasts everything that is not selected or what is selected depending on delete non selected enabled or not. So you can see our names come into play right now. Flip source geometry. So it deleted it, but we really need to keep our flip source, so delete non selected. And we'll name it. Oh, actually, we should not. I'll tell you why later. So I'll duplicate the node and change the group that we are not deleting to other group. So ground plane. You can see that ground plane is stable. Once more. Remember to clear this group part because if we'll just select, a, if 
we just select, it will append. Also, you could just erase it, click it, and like leave this. But this will allow you to leave off only primitives. That's a useful feature. But we need, really need all objects. So, volume well, source here. What we'll do to reference these nodes is append a null. So, for example, if I have another geometry node, object merge, this is basically grab from the other object kind of node. So, you can see that all nodes are listed in alphabetic order. That is not really convenient. For example, if you'll try to reference your nodes from really complicated big list of nodes in a network. This would be quite a mess to deal with because in this case you can see that all right this is our flip source geo ground plane and vellum source right pretty easy. What we'll do to make our life easier and like as a good practice we'll use nulls. I'll show you what is it. Now is node that does not do anything except one useful thing. You can cache it. Not really useful with a static geometry, right? You can name it. This is a flip source geo. And when you try to reference network, you can see that, all right, nodes are on top, even though F is clearly after the A, so nodes are always on top. And now we referenced our flip source geometry. Good job. Let's keep doing this for all other nodes. No and no. Like this. This will be company. Let's clarify that this is geometry. And this is Vellum Source Geo. I specified that this is geometry because Vellum Source is really not a clear way to specify that this is our geometry, basically. You'll see soon. All right, now as our import node is done, I can hide it so that it will not be ghosting here. This node, I can delete it, but I would need to create it anyway, so it's a good thing I created. It. It's geometry node with object merge node in it. So yeah, I'll name it setup. And this would be where we set up our fully fluid submission. Ground plane was merely visual, although we can use it for collisions also. But Houdini encompasses really good tool for ground plane. And I'll show you in it in a moment. So first of all, we got our object imported as object merge and flip source geometry object. So it is already converted, so we don't really need to do much else. What we can do is create dot network. This is our dynamic operator network, so that this is our geometry. We change how mesh looks and moves, but dynamics change the simulation stuff. So you can see that I plugged it into first input. This will be important later. We see only output here, and this is rather good. So this is our output of dynamics. Let's set gravity as final force and add merge for collisions in the future. Let leap solver. This is brain of our simulation. At least flea brain. You can see brain here. Nice. So we have a bunch of inputs, right? Worry not, we don't really need that much. You can see that inputs are named fluid to solve, 
particle velocity, volume velocity, and sourcing. Right now, we'll use only first input fluid to solve. The object will be our input for this now. You can see that it takes some time to calculate, and we see a cube. Why cube? Because if you click on flip object, you can see that under properties, under initial data, you can see SOP path. So this is where our geometry comes from for this object. What we'll need to do is replace this string referring to default object of flip system for a correct name. What is correct name in our case? Remember how we plugged in our geometry into first input? Well, there is a smart way to reference it. Of course, this is Houdini. One of the ways is click back tick. This is near your tilde key. Now op input path. Op input path will reference to a string that contains just two dots, so it doesn't matter. And float is zero because programmers count from zero. So first input is input zero. And once we click, you can see that, all right, we have sphere, but pen and tilt are weird, why so? Because we are grabbing on boundaries of simulation. So let's edit boundaries and disable this over here. So grab our handle, scale it down because, well, fluid ain't gonna jump and scale it from below because we'll have a ground plane, it will not go below it. Also, on right, it will not go that far. The smaller this boundary, the faster simulation is because the fluid uses vectors and vector grids, so voxels, basically, since we are working in 3D. So all this volume is filled with voxels because we'll need to calculate for air pressures. That's what it does. So keep your volume as low as possible. When you're done with scaling, you can exit the handle mode to be back on hand. Secure selection, yes. So when you're done, you can jump into volume motion, volume limits, and disable visualize volume limits so that we can open all we want around, not being collided with volume limits. So now as this is done, let's change our method to visualization because, well, as fun as these spheres may be, it is not really a convenient way to see it. Guides, particles, visualization set to, well, particles. That's it. We'll use our speed of our particles as ramp. You can change colors here if you wish to. We can change it to. So that black will be our static particles. We now can just click on play and it will drop like this. You can see how it speeds up. So you can see that it is falling out of our boundary and did not collide with anything, right? Because, well, we don't have anything. So we have a perfect case where our ground plane is on the bottom, like zero of our coordinates. This is not always the case. It is not like we really always have set up. So just to create ground plane collision, if you if you need like infinitely stretched plane as a ground collision, right? This is entirely possible. In top network, oh, not here. Top network, ground plane. 
is pretty intuitively named node, will save you a headache of placing it manually, like a really stretch plane. So, worry not, even though it seems like it is small, it is really not small. It is infinitely stretched. And it just did not collide. All right, let's check what might be. Okay, that was. I wanted to stretch it, like, okay, to make it more interesting. But the reason is the way we merge them. You can see in affector relationships that left inputs affect right inputs with collide type of relationships. And well, we could change it, like place it on the left and stuff. What we could do instead is mutual. This is mutual interaction. And just like this, boop, and it works. Although it will keep spreading for a simple reason of us not setting up viscosity, surface tension, and a bunch of other parameters. So this was manual way to set it up. You can set up all physical properties in your flip object, physical and right here. For example, viscosity will, well, change how viscous fluid you're simulating is. Make sure you enable viscosity in simulator settings. It is really a separate parameter, so there is a lot to consider. So right now we enabled surface tension and viscosity. Let's see how simulation changes from just a big splash. Yep, pretty viscous fluid with lots of surface tension. And just like this, we made it. We have a droplet. What if we drop lower? You can experiment to see what changes what. Right now you can see that, all right, viscosity increases really fast. So even if we place just a little viscosity here, it will be pretty viscous. Although most of this influence of stopping like this is caused because we have surface tension that is 10. If we drop it, you can see that, all right, we'll have Pretty much same. Oh no, it is actually bigger. You don't see much of changes because the first simulation that we made was entirely without both viscosity and surface tension. And when we now enable it, we get viscous and, well, fluids with surface tension. And, well, fluids tend to gather in groups, in droplets. So we can lower it to like minimal values. Also change our friction or density. A lot of parameters to play with, really. There are few more important than others. For example, once of this few instances, few instances of important parameters are particle separation, grid scale, and particle radius scale. Their relationship is pretty mythical here. If we get to get simple, particle separation is, let me jump to zero, is distance between points and it is kind of resolution, but be aware that this changes 
really fast. And the lower you get, the more resources it will take for your computer to process it. So particle radius scale is how far from particle separation it will collide. So if we have 1.13 and say we had two here, right? This would be particle separation multiplied by this will be counted as collision. So 0 0.26 will be mathematical radius of collision of our particles. This is important and scaling it up usually helps but also can be too much sometimes. So play with it. Grid scale on the other hand is your voxel scale. So the lower it is, the better resolution of simulation and better chances to have good and working simulation. But in the same time, it will take drastically more time. So you can see how we changed resolution and simulation changed in response to this. Let's try to disable viscosity, for example. And it just drops like it did before. This is what viscosity does. Even though it is set to really low parameter here. Not zero. Can go zero. So this is a pretty simple setup. Just a quick simulation with one collision object. If we were to add any collision object, you would just put it in your merge node here, just like this. That's how you set up collisions. So this is the most basic setup. We'll go over how to make this a continuous stream now. And then we'll go over how to mesh this so that you'll not have particles, but you'll have solid mesh you can export. Great. Now, we have single remission. You can see this in our topnet. When we play it in real time, you can see that fluid drops, splashes, and that's it. Let's check how we can make this a continuous mission. So we'll have a stream of fluid from this source. First of all, we'll have to get rid of this string here. We will not source flip object. It will be empty for now. We'll use volume source here. Volume source. And our input will be that string. That'll be our sourcing input. Although, thing is, we will need to source particles and our input is not really particles, right? So let's grab our parameter. So let's grab our node that will allow us to make our volume into particles. And well, that's really particles. Let's grab our node that will allow us to transform our geometry into points. So let's grab points from volume. Quite simple. Input. So we'll change it to input one. So it is no more our mesh that goes to first input. It is our particles, points to be precise. This is how it looks.
Oh, no, one thing. Point separation is really important. So let's make sure our values meet each other and match. So we'll jump into flip object, properties, particle separation. We'll right click, copy parameter, and this does two things. It does not only copy value, so you can see that we don't really have anything in the in the clipboard. It copies a path to our parameter. So I'll right click it, past relative references. You can see that it refers now to the channel in a top net here, flip object one and particle set. This is precisely our parameter particle set. You can see it in a pop-up. So right now we have particles here. They go here, are being sourced and will be emitted any frame we wish to. Also, we have an activation parameter, 0, 1, right? And this will allow us to make continuous emission. Although, right now, source flip is not correct mode that we'll need to use. We'll need to use source smoke as a workaround. And disable sourcing group so that it will source anything we have because, well, we have it unified. So it does source it, but it disappears. Why so? Let's check it. So the reason for our error was that when we clicked source flip, you see how it adds operations, right? If we change it to different sourcing, it will have a bunch more. So we don't need actually any of these sources. So you can just clear operations, make sure your source particles, the group is empty, and your SOP path is correct. In our case, it is, and then when we press play, it just works. You can see how viscous fluid just groups while it flows down, and while it does, it unifies it, it is. And now, we have fluid that drips down. I'll increase particle separation to optimize my simulation because I will not be able to showcase many of desired effects. I used to trahedral or better grid, right? And I'll increase cheater here so that it will not be just a grid some imperfections are desirable so when we click play you can see that all right it drops what you can also check is whether or not it is remeshing so what is remesh receding so what we'll need to check is receding in particle motion under receding you can disable receipt particles. What it does, it checks if we have excess particles in one area and distributes them automatically. While it can be useful for persistent simulation and for many setups that we'll need to do, it is not highly optimal, I would say, but it is entirely up to you. I usually disable it because I get better results without it. So, right now we have pretty dense simulation. Let's see. downscale, grid scale, 
and make particle part radius scale a bit big, bigger like this and well we see the collision works a bit better if you wish to ever disable it and I hope you wish poor PC if you do not wish to disable it so you can do it in your volume source node you can add keyframe to parameter of activation with alt and left click and you could disable it this way when you drag it to zero and a key so when we initiate simulation you can see that it drops it drops up until our disable frame and it stops magnificent It is beautiful to see how streams from outside the surface of stream separate like this into clear lines like an iris. I guess you could make this as iris generator for your models if you really need to. <laughs> there are simpler ways, I guess. Let's allow it to finish moving a bit. You can see how it slows down because of our viscosity and surface tension. Even though we set it up really low and with this scale it's really lots of particles. I just click on escape to cancel bake, that's why it disappeared. And you can see how metal is absolutely static right now because remember how we set up in our guide's particle visualization when speed is zero it is all zero. So you can see how middle already stopped and the end is really close to an end. To a stop, I mean. So, if we play back it now, you can see how it is cached and it just plays. And it's beautiful liquid. If you wish to make sure you don't have such consistent streams on our side, we can change our scattering a bit from time to time. So, Detrusate can be added with frame multiply it by 001 so that it will change gradually and not jump all over so you can see how it changes each frame so it will have natural jitter here and if you jump back into simulate okay it did not notice our changes Let's change our parameter here and there. Or we can just straight up click save to disk. It will start simulation once again. So now we have more random flow. Even though Iris was kind of beautiful, we don't need patterns on Fluid. This would really freak out the viewer because our brain is constantly seeking for patterns everywhere. So it would be better to not trigger it. With ever-changing seed, we really have a random picture here. Not like picture picture, but no patterns that you could serve so, 
And well, that's how you make constant flow. You can make it as long as you wish, and it's just so we can reference lots of parameters. Oh, that was beautiful. Because the last drop was big mass on top of it, and yeah, this has a splash. Nice. If you saw how I use frame parameter, you could also use it for modifying viscosity of your fluid to make it stop over time. Houdini is really versatile when it comes to equations, functions, and a bunch of versatility. How do I say it to not repeat myself? It's really flexible when you wish to do something. You just gotta know how to do it. So that's that's it. Flare fluids are pretty easy and if you just wish to mesh it, you can drop dop import reference our top net from here. We'll have whole output of our simulation here, but it will select only but we'll select only but we will select only flip object one so that we have only fluid. And you can just click part oh we, we can actually cache it to file. File cache Same cache, and this would be this would be our dot network output. Just click on save to disk, and it will proceed with caching our simulation for a whole frame range. This will allow us to not recalculate anything and just load it straight up from disk. Now the bake is almost finished. We can observe what I meant by let's files. So we have really lots of data in here. You can see how our simulation from DOP network is stored in sim. It is temporarily cached, so if you change any parameters, it will cache itself. And this file cache saved to different folder, same cache. Dop output, file cache one. So that's how we would store this data. So when you press play, you can see how particles drop and how fluid moves. Let's now mesh it. I cached it for precisely this reason. So, fluid compress. This would be useful really before we save to disk, mainly to save us some space, but I, I don't care about space. You should though. So, that would be great practice to place we compress before file caching. We actually in Houdini have really useful node. So particle fluid surface. It will basically mesh your fluid for you. Almost automatic like. All you'll need to do is to make sure you enter your particle separa separation value here. You'll need to make sure your particle separation value reference is busted here. It is still copied from our last operation with it, so you just click Astrology References. So right now it meshes each frame, although it takes some time. So we can scale down the voxel volume if you need more resolution. And 
you can play with fuel train it, if you need to. It has really lots of parameters, although I usually just tweak influence scale, voxel, and droplet scale. scale. In this case, is really thick fluid, so we don't need much. Although you can make it as low res as you wish. For example, we can just copy parameter, erase the reference, right? So that is just number. Let's find a frame where we have most details. Where was our splash? Right here. So. We have a bunch of particles in here, but here we have like this group. Let's scale down a bit of particle fluid machine parameter. This is not entirely good way to do it. So you can see how if we make it really lower, you can see how each particle is surrounded with a circle. That's what particle separation does. Let's make sure to pass our relative reverse back. But we'll scale down the voxel value. So it is at least detailed. I'll cancel the bake because it seems like my PC can handle it. 0.3. It doesn't look pristine or something like that, but it is quite enough for this particle scale. That's why fluid simulations are pretty much most expensive part of simulation. They take really long time to make even on professional servers. So let's cache our finalized mesh here. I don't really need to name it, although for understanding it will be better. We'll click save to disk and it is quite fast to mesh it to save it so I'll be right back so now this back is finished we can switch display flag to all file cache and press play and you can see how our mesh just works and yep it may not be really detailed when we zoom into it but remember that our particle separation is zero Point one five, I reckon. So let's jump into it, check it. Yep, zero point one five. That is not really big resolution. It's just that it is good for demonstration, just because how fast it works. If you zoom out, like really far, like this far. This is pretty fine. I consider it even higher as from afar at the level. <laughs> so yeah. And we even have this wave in it. Nice. So right now you can just grab it and lambic wrap output. Select where you want to output it. I'll name it not vellum. And frame range. 
save it and you can see it let's import alembic Houdini export flip one and you can see how it replaced our flip source geometry that is thick like really thick group and we have 250 frames of it so this was really a long and manual way to set it all up we can also do it pretty automatically let me show you how shelves work so let's grab our object object merge so that we don't need to enter it once again out of flip and we just click flip root from object and it sets it as addition to our already existing top network but it basically does all set up for us in the same way we did it so let's not do it basically it creates a bunch of nodes so this is our auto flip import right this is our machine node it imports from our dot network as we did compresses fluid as i should it stores it quick preview the surfacing then surface cache and auto render and this is just preview of particles so that we could check it that's kind of it this is fluid fluid being resolved so we know how to mesh it how to simulate it all good stuff we also have valent fluid it is useful in some ways primarily because valent can interact with clothes and hair and soft bodies because they all are simulated through the same volume simulation system so let's create geometry node that will encompass all our volume simulation in it this is our volume sim setup we'll add object merge but we'll change the object we are after to volume source so this one we'll need to create dot network as previously the paper sorry dot network first input as usual add gravity add merge sorry add and merge ground plane mutual to make sure collisions are working vellum solver with vellum solver we have few options more so first of all vellum object as previously this is our object we would source geometry or points from this will be our op input path one as per usual but one thing though we'll need to set up geometry and initial constraints before we start with simulation and this would be our volume source so object source we can skip this but we'll still need sop constraints so let's jump into it and set it up i'll grab this volume grain and it is pretty much set up now third node here third output is collision we don't need collision because we have ground plane we would need it though and we would pass the second input i mean the third one if starting from one so right here in your grain setup
create points from volume, type fluid, sphere packing, so that it will be quite random, point count, particle size. One thing with volume is that it is not point, it is not particle fluid in a way. So these spheres are literally primitives of spheres. So it will be not that easy to mesh it, but I'll show you in a bit. So now I'll disable overlapping so that we'll not have conflicts with it. And since we have input zero as our geometry and input one as our constraints, we'll set it up right here as we did before, op input path, input path, string is dot dot, and this is our zero because this is our soft path, and our, sorry, not target, but our constraint sub is here. So if we click on play now, simulation will start. You can see how it drops. Let's cancel the wake. We can use Vellum object here to make our objects in shade properly. This will be much easier because we are we will not have this duplicate here. All right, that just does not work. After some fiddling around, looks like there is some errors with the cache. So let's click on save. It will recache it, and it should basically remove all errors that we have right now. Make sure your allow caching is on because it will prevent your object from being properly displayed in the cache. So now as we set it up as op input path zero here, op input path one here, in vellum object we have allow caching displayed, display geometry turned on. You can skip displaying constraints. This would not be useful right now. So if we just press it play and you can see how fluids just work. It is quite faster than your vellum simulation because we don't have we don't have pressure. We don't we do not account for air and anything like this. It's just pure particles dropping with fluid like behavior. And you can set it up and its physical data in your vellum grain. Physical attributes Surface tension will be located here, as well as our friction and viscosity. So let's try to make viscosity as low as we did before. And surface tension is also really low. So now we'll, when we press play, it drops. Thing is with Vellum, you gotta have a less surface tension usually to make them stick together. So you can just do that. We also need to make sure that in Vellum Solver, right, in Advanced, in Fluids, SKST Setup, uh, good, 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 good. We can also change parameters of whole simulation here in Vellum Solver by surface tension in fluids. You can see how they try to stay together, but it's not an easy task whatsoever. So we can increase surface. Seems like it makes it explode, so.
All right, we managed to increase surface tension just a bit, enough to make particles stick. Although our friction is not yet high enough, I think, so I will increase friction. And you should see that it splashes now. Velum grain is really hard to control this way. You'll need to play a lot with parameters. On your free time, if you wish, you can check it out. It's really useful for fast simulations, or for example, if you need to make salt bodies float. This would be your choice, I guess. So this is the other way to set it up. Let's try to mesh it. As previously, dope dop import will reference our velmsim setup dop network and we will try to use our default particle fluid service right thing is with grain it does not really work work that well you can see how it is immediately worse than it was before, even though our particle separation is, particle size is quite the same. So we can decrease our particle separation to be somewhat near half of our particle size so that our particles will be meshed together. This would allow us to have fully surface, but this will also introduce a lot of jittering. Let me cache it for you, and we'll, ch we'll check it. Also, I'll fully compress it. And I'll file cache. So, save the disk, and I'll be back as soon as this is done. So, now as back is done, we can preview how our fluid bake looks. This was really fast volume setup, so it would be quite jittery. And you can still see some alien activity right here. <laughs> has its uses. It's really specific. It is not for splashy fluids. You can use it to make really viscous fluids really fast when you don't need to really consider it for pressure and for lots of other things. But it's not really for splashy fluids, so use it for suitable use cases. Now, you know how to make fluids, you know how to make the foam once we discovered how you can make fluid, how you can mesh it, let's check how you can make vellum flow. It's quite simple. In your dot network, in your vellum source, in emission type, make sure to toggle each frame. It'll just work. It just works. Until you, once again, toggle activation to zero. So let's just do that. Alt left click, scroll a bit to the further and alt click here once again. So right now we have this amount of particles being flowed into and just steps right here. And as for viscous huge amount of fluid like this vellum is not bad i would say i'd use it for even more viscous fluids only ones that are almost like gel like so this is let's preview how it can be meshed Oh, it takes same time. Although it's quite fast. You can see how it jumps by 30% here and there, so it'll be soon finished.
it should be just a huge puddle. Yep, just like this. Also, it would ripple a lot because we downscaled. our here in particle separation we downscaled it really low so it it would really be ripply and not consistent so quite like this so now you know how to set up really quickly manually in details both flip fluids and valent fluids if you were to set it up manually, this would take all this time. But if you wish to set up automatically, believe me, it is far faster than that. It's just a few buttons, really. So, once again, our flip fluid setup can be done with just one fast button in particle fluids, flip fluid from object. As there is also lots of objects and setups that you can use. But this is the simplest. You just click on it and it just works. Same goes for our vellum setup. It's just a simple click of button. Vellum grains. And you just jump in. Make sure you enable fluid here and set up parameters as you wish here. And that's it. That's the basics. Now we'll dive into how do we use it? How do we apply forces to fluid? How do we make sure it moves in the needed direction? And what setup should we use for it? See you soon in chapter 2.